Well, hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast episode 111. I'm Emily McDermott, and I'm here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. Well, now that spring is here, everyone has this energy about them. Maybe for you, it's about spring cleaning. Maybe it's about planting flowers. Maybe it's about grabbing trash bags and just getting rid of everything. (laughs) I've heard that called rage decluttering before, but before you grab those trash bags and go crazy, I am excited to bring you this episode today. We are going to be talking about your spring decluttering plan. And yes, all the letters of spring stand for something in this plan. So I'm really excited to share this with you today so we can be intentional about how we're going to go through our spring decluttering. And this is the second episode in our spring decluttering series. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Well, if you are like me, your kids are having spring break right now, and my kids are actually at an afternoon camp right now as I'm recording. And perhaps you have some projects in mind, but aren't sure whether they are feasible because of your kids <laughs> being at home and things being a little bit crazy. That is why I am sharing this simple spring decluttering plan because we are all about making small, consistent progress, understanding we might not have hours of time to devote to spring decluttering. So let's go ahead and dive in. So our first letter is the letter S and that stands for schedule a weekly pickup or a drop off. Now this is great for a number of reasons. Number one, it's keeping you accountable so that you are actually going to be putting in your schedule when this is happening. And number two, it just provides this great rhythm for what you are decluttering as you are looking through things, you'll know, oh, okay, I have a pickup scheduled every Friday. So that will help me know how I'm going to declutter earlier in the week. And there are several organizations that do pickups depending where you are. Some of the most popular ones that I know of are Green Drop, Pick Up Please, Salvation Army, and Habitat for Humanity. So after you do a quick Google search, you can find which one will work for you. Alternatively, if you have a donation center close by, you can go ahead and schedule that drop off and maybe even bring the kids with you to show them what it is all about and help them understand why decluttering is so important. So that is letter S. Next, we move on to letter P, which is to pick the space that has been stressing you out the most. Now, normally I recommend starting in the most unsentimental, unemotional areas of your home, and that still might be the case. But when it comes to that spring decluttering, spring cleaning energy, a lot of times we wanna just deal with the thing that has been bugging us (laughs) the most, right, for months and months. So you can use what my friend Julia Ubenga calls the stress test, where you're really going into the different areas of their home and you're figuring out, okay, what is stressing me out the most? And making a list of maybe the top two to three areas. And once you have done that, we are going to move on to letter R, which is to remove items from the surfaces first 
and actually move things into another space to process those items. Now, the reason that I recommend this, and I do this with my in-person clients as well, is that a lot of times when you're in that space that's stressing you out and everything is cluttered, you don't really know where to start. You don't really know how to process things because there's no room. So you want to be able to clear off a space. Maybe it's your kitchen counter. Maybe it is your dining room table and have that be the area where you are processing things that you are going to look through in that particular space. So you want to, let's say, clear your first surface, bring those things to the area where you're going to do the processing, make sure that it's a small doable amount of stuff. And then we are going to separate them into different categories. So I actually recommend having six different categories, but don't get worried that that's so much. (laughs) They're pretty straightforward. We have, of course, trash, and then, of course, recycling. Then things that you know you want to donate or give to a specific person. Maybe it would be a neighbor or a friend or so forth. Then the fourth one is a go back bin, which means that it's either going back to a different floor, like going back to the upstairs or the basement, or going back to another area on the same floor where you're at. Now you want to wait until you're done decluttering that entire space before you bring things back because you may have a tendency to get distracted and we don't want that. We wanna focus on the room, the area that is causing us the most stress. The fifth bag or bin that you would need is an out of sight, out of mind bin. And that is for things where you can't quite make the decision yet. And I will link to some episodes in the show notes that talks more about the out of sight, out of mind bin. And then the last thing is if anything needs to be looked at or reviewed by someone else in your home, maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your husband. I know that for me, I found this bag of cords and I want to go through them with my husband so we can see what we actually need, what we don't need. So those are the categories that you want to use and you're just going to kind of line everything up, go through it, decide where it's going to go and then keep moving on. Okay, so we have SPR, next is I, for intentionally decide what goes back, where, and why. And as you have those clear spaces, the surfaces, and then eventually the drawers, you can be intentional about how you're putting things back. We wanna make sure that everything has a home, which we spoke about in episode five, and also in episode 42, asking ourselves three questions as we are looking at our space. How do I want this room to feel? How do I want it to function? And how do I want it to flow? As in, how do I want to flow within it? And then also the stuff flowing in and out of it. And you want to use the artificial boundaries that you already have in place to decide what goes where. You do not need to go out and buy a bunch of bins. (laughs) So this is not a commercial for the container store. It never is. But just look at what artificial boundaries you have already to be able to put things in. Now, I do sometimes use drawer separators. In fact, I just use old Amazon boxes and that allows me to have subcategories of things within my drawers, but you don't need to get fancy. So once you have intentionally decided what goes back where and why, we're moving on to letter N, which is notice how you feel when the space is clear. Look at those clear surfaces. Look at how you've been able to make room in this space and celebrate that feeling of being able to breathe deeply, of being able to move within the space. Come on over to our Facebook group at tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm and share with others how it feels. This gives you both the motivation and that momentum to keep going. So noticing that and really celebrating that is important. And the last letter for spring is G, which is that you gather data so you can create a system to keep that space clutter-free. You've worked so hard on it, and now we want to make sure it can be maintained. So over the next one to two weeks, you want to notice 
is the area getting cluttered again easily? Maybe it's the surfaces. And of course, clutter attracts clutter and then the surfaces keep getting cluttered. Why might that be happening? Is it that you are putting stuff on there because you are not taking the time to put it away? Is it that other people are putting things on there and you have to remind them and provide them some guidance? And in episode 69, I do talk about getting family members on board. So check that out. Or is it that you keep bringing a lot of new stuff into your home and you haven't figured out where things go yet? It can be a combination of things, but that's where we want to start developing a system around our stuff. And if you ever need help with that, you know where to find me. I have virtual and in-person decluttering coaching. So you can go over to simplebyemmy.com forward slash coaching. And I'm happy to help you develop a system to keep these areas clutter free once you have taken all of that time and energy to declutter them. So to recap, here is your six step decluttering plan for spring. S, schedule a weekly pickup or drop off. P, pick the space that has been stressing you out the most. R, remove items from the surfaces first, then you can start moving to the drawers and the closets, and you want to bring them to another space to process those items. I is intentionally decide what goes back where and why. N is notice how you feel in that clear space and to celebrate it. And G is to gather data so you can create a system to keep the space clutter-free. And of course, you can always work with me if you need additional support in that area. On Thursday, we're going to be talking to New York Times bestselling author and the host of the Slow Living podcast, Stephanie O'Day, about overcoming either or and all or nothing thinking that holds us back in motherhood, as well as decluttering and home management. It's a wonderful conversation. So I will see you on Thursday. Bye for now. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.